Hello there. Welcome to the World Cafe podcast. This podcast has been designed with created content that centers on the power of words. Can we really do anything without speaking? Can we really do anything without the agency of words? Yes, that is what this podcast is all about. And I am your host, Amakri Isui, your neighborhood work trader. I believe in the power of words. For it is the unit of creation I trade in words to profit my world. Hello there. (laughs) How are you? Beautiful. Okay, before I go into all the uh, pleasantries and all that, you know how we do it on the show. And uh, I'm going to begin. Yep. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good everything. Wherever you are at at this particular instant, hearing my voice on the surface of the earth, how are you doing? What's it like at your end? Beautiful. Well, at my end, uh, we have it sunny today. You know, it's pretty sunny today and quite uh what i say who need you know and uh we're just there having fun going on and on what's it like at your end beautiful i know we're all dealing with life in one way or the other and uh beautiful life is a gift it's a beautiful thing and uh, we can make the best use of it you know that's why we're here it's a gift all right before i go into what we'll be talking about today i want to do a little bit of uh not really storytelling per se now storytelling yes but a little bit of you know round and round and round before we're now zeroing to what we're here i'll tell you the, 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 the topic of what we'll talk about but i want to begin it from an experience i had back in school undergrad then i did biochemistry you know on as my first degree and biochemistry is one one course that is so abstract in its in its entirety. You know, if you want to do physiology, medicine, anatomy, biochemistry has a lot to do. It has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to play there. Yep. So one of this our classes, you know, one of our professor, uh, Professor Ekeke, yes, that's his name. And we're we're talking about the Krebs circle, you know, the tricarboxylic circle, for those of you who understand that, you know, and how it was elucidated, explained. And the the, the person that worked on it won uh, a Nobel Prize for his Hans Krebs, that's his name. But the day he came to teach us about, you know, the tricarboxylic circle, Krebs circle, he just told us, He started by saying that what he's teaching or what he's telling us now, it's happening within our system as he's talking. You know, tricarboxylic circle, let me just summarize it for the purpose of what we are doing, you know, describes how energy is produced when we consume food, you know, typical glucose, how the cycle starts from that point up until you come to that point of adenosine triphosphate NADPH as we call it yes I did a lot of that back in school you know so and it's like he he said what what I'm telling you about is happening in your system and the beautiful thing is Hans Krebs who elucidated the tricarboxylic circle you know was like he had to peer into that dimension of plucking things from obscurity you know bringing things that are so abstract to reality and somehow empirically proven their existence so to say and he won a Nobel prize for that you can go he did so much you know when you go talk about the mitochondria what happens in there and all that okay let me not bore you with all the you know biochemical jargons now now this is why i'm beginning this episode of the word cafe podcast on this 
you know, we're surrounded with by a lot of principles governed by laws that even when you don't when you are ignorant so to say you're not aware it doesn't stop them from taking place but a lot of us who have come to pluck those things out of obscurity and somehow formulate certain theories law i mean not laws now principles that we live by and we ascribe it to them these are amazing minds be it in the science scientific a- area be it in the arts be it in humanities be it in what have you they sit down somehow they conceptualize this abstraction as we want to call it what we, we, we may want to call it and all of that so it brings me to what i want to talk about today the, yes i know you're dying to hear that okay the title of what i want to talk about today is the abilene paradox <laughs> abilene paradox it is spelled a b i l e n e abilene paradox some time ago i overheard yes this great mind jew uh audrey is yes i mean audrey joe is i beg your pardon you know she was talking about it and it, it caught my attention and I went to do some reading about the Abilene Paradox. Such an amazing, amazing, what I call it, concept or theory. First of all, I want us to look at the word paradox. What's the meaning of paradox? For those of us who are English, uh, we love English and uh, we, we, we just, before you do anything, you know, I, I will do some, yeah let's define it or let us look into the meaning of the word paradox a statement that is seemingly contradictory or opposed to common sense and yet is perhaps true yet self-contradictory a self-contradictory statement you know at first it seems true an argument blah 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 and all of that but simply put something that looks contradictory but in itself is very true and that is the abilene paradox it is called you know simply put the management of agreement you know when i looked at that the management of agreement what came to my mind was you know that scripture that tells me can two walk together said they are in agreement can two people can a group can a family come together to achieve something without an agreement it means you know for there to be an agreement it means there's a discussion people's opinion are taken into consideration it is not one one person said it and we all are, we just flow with it without discussing it it's not as if we are we are disagreeing per se but but for us to go in that direction we need to hear our opinion so what is the abilene paradox the abilene paradox describes a group dynamic where the collective agrees on a path of action that none of the individual members want to do (laughs) did you hear that let me take it again the abilene paradox describes a group of dynamic where the collective agrees on a path a part of action yes that none of the individual members want to do as in more or less we're 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 lying to ourselves now i'm going to read i'm going to read uh what i call it uh yep a work explaining throwing more light on the abilene paradox where it all started from so listen i'm going to do some reading then we go into you know the way we do it on the show yada 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 we say one or two things here and there have you ever found yourself in a brainstorming session at work where everyone ends up agreeing on a less than ideal course of action now let me tell you what i'm reading the abilene paradox when not rocking the boat may sink the boat did you hear that? You know, for boats to like move, you need to rock. Row, row, row your boat gently down the streams, merrily, 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 merrily. Life, you rock the boat, you rock the boat. But what, what happens when you don't rock the boat? 
All right, I keep reading. The Abilene Paradox describes this unfortunately common situation where a group of people agree to an idea despite most of them not fully believing what it is as in the best you know believing that it is the best decision although it may seem surprising that several people might pursue something that few of them truly have faith in the phenomenon has a simple explanation it's mainly caused by a fear, or rather a fear of challenging the status quo. Yep. Learning to identify and manage the Abilene paradox is essential to avoid costly group decisions. All right. The Abilene paradox was first described by Jerry B. Harvey in his 1974 article, The Abilene Paradox, The Management of Agreement. Harvey, a professor of management science at the George Washington uh, University that's DC was spending time with his in-laws his in-laws during the excuse me during the heat wave in Texas when his father-in-law suggested going for a dinner in Abilene 53 miles away actually it's a city I mean a place Abilene is actually a place in Texas you know, Harvey went along with the plan and as his wife and mother-in-law also both agreed to make him the trip. Later, all four t- <laughs> returned home hurt and irritated with Harvey's mother-in-law admitting that she always thought Abilene was a terrible idea and would rather have stayed at home. Harvey and his wife then de- declared that they had not wanted to go either but had agreed to it to avoid rocking the boat when everyone else had seemed, you know, keen. Even Harvey's father-in-law said he had not really wanted to go, you know, wanted to travel in that on-air-conditioned car. He explained that he had only suggested the trip as he was worried his guests were getting bored. Harvey went on to coin this occurrence the abilene paradox in which there is a failure to effectively manage agreement at the time most managerial advice was focused on how to you know better manage conflict instead how they argue that in modern organizations learning how to deal with agreement was more present than the management of conflict did you hear that the abilene paradox can have terrible consequences the 1986 nasa shuttle tragedy in which all seven crew members lost their lives in such an example after several delays and much cancellations managers were desperate to launch the shuttle as a result the group collectively disagreed warnings from engineers about the risk associated with the launch in cold weather with millions of viewers watching live on tv the shuttle broke apart within 73 seconds of launch the Abilene paradox is commonly confused with groupthink. But the two have different characteristics. All right, let me stop there. You, I mean, somehow every day of our lives, every day of our lives, we go through this process of management of agreement. A lot of us, you know, decisions are made, even like to run a home, decisions are made to run an organization, decisions are made to run the country, decisions are made. So for decisions to be made, we need to come to that agreement. And for agreement to be made, we need to hear ourselves. It sounds easy, but it is the most difficult thing. And I've looked at so many organizations, you know, tough. I mean, those 100 years they've been in the business, 30, 40, 60, 200, 500, you know, like a family business that I've grown to be like a global brand. And I ask myself, what has kept these businesses, these names, what has kept them? Their understanding of 
management of agreement. You know, the way the world works, I'm not speaking as if I am, uh, what I call it, uh, a specialist, but from observation, there's ninth, there's day, the sun and the moon rule according to an order. So that order defines or describes the agreement between the sun and the moon. Yes. They have their place. They express themselves in a way. So imagine if the sun takes over and starts to come up at when the moon shoot and the moon takes over from when. There will be confusion. There will be catastrophe. There will be a cataclysmic occurrence. <laughs> yes. But these two, these two entities, they obey a law. In obeying, they agree. There's this understanding. It's like they speak to themselves. And this is what I see about organizations that thrive. Even in the confusion, even in the disruption, they come to have this sense of agreement where everybody everybody's voice is necessary everybody's voice is heard everybody's opinion is considered now this is not saying that in the bid to hear everybody and come to this understanding or agreement you listen to stupidity or foolishness no but you allow people express themselves you allow people not really air their opinion they tell you this is what i'm thinking about this thing and you put it together you consider because every breakthrough every new uh should i say uh frontier new whatever in any area was as a result of an individual airing his or her views and was considered and was listened to Initially, it might appear like nonsense, but because we want to make progress, we'll listen. The management of agreement. So many organizations are having that problem today where the top down is what takes place. Yes, when the CEO says something, that's fine. I'll know, you know, ah, the CEO has said all that. But if you come to look at the, the tree, you know, when you look at the tree, back again to my uh, elementary biology con. Our chemistry class. When you look at how the tree of vegetations function, you know, you, you look at, you've heard a word before, photosynthesis, as in the process by which a green plants manufacture their food in the presence of water, sunlight, and CO2. Yes, we know that. But when you go into the nitty gritty of that process, you come to see that the root you know, the root of the plant that we don't always see plays a lot, has a lot to do in the functioning of vegetations. Yes, the green we see as a result of the uh, the chlorophyll that traps the sunlight, you know, with the help of the uh, uh, chelating agent, uh, magnesium and I mean, uh, uh, what have you, and all that. You know, you see the green and all that. But when you go underneath the tree or the plant you come to see that the roots are doing so much as in they are playing so much role that it is not seen but there is this agreement between the the, the stem the leaves and the roots they have this understanding they have this agreement they discuss there's a point of discussion and it is like at that point there is a distribution of function and everyone knows where his freedom starts and his freedom ends if i must put it that way you know so many organizations have that problem yes they feel the minute you occupy a managerial role you have all the answers but that's not true they feel when someone is promoted elevated to a higher position of authority. He or she has all it takes, but so many times it's not true. The strength of a general is seen in his troop. Yeah. The strength of 
any country, any organization, any family, any collectivity or collection, if I must use that word, it is how they come together to agree in achieving. So everybody is involved in it. Everybody has a portion. So we talk. Why do you think we shouldn't do this? Or why do you think we should do this? Or why do you think we should not? And the person, you know, maybe gives you an idea. So we are all invested or we all have vested interests, so to say, in this thing. I have an interest to life. Everybody who walks on the surface of the earth has an interest to life. But we must sit down and agree. Can two people walk together without an agreement? Without having an understanding? Without seeing? Because you think you've seen it all. Your perspective is everything. But the other man also sees a different perspective. So when we all bring the different perspective into one, we create a wholesome perspective that speaks to our very being, our success. Yes, the Abilene paradox. I, I mean, it applies in everywhere, be it in homes, organizations, businesses, in countries. You know, there was a story I read about, uh, I think that uh, Stalin or so, yep, when they were afraid to tell him that Netherlands and uh, Holland were the same thing. He thought, as I think, from history, that these are two different, but he, the people were afraid, as in people around him, maybe because of the personality he has come to build, because of the personality he has come to build. So you see, sometimes our leaders display ignorance and they call it knowledge. They share stupidity. Yep, share stupidity. They don't want to listen. They don't want to hear. Yes, sometimes making decisions like uh, you say, ah, it will be time consuming. It will be time wasting for us to wait for everybody to bring their opinion and all that. And it will slow the process. And before you know it, we've lost so much time and we've lost money. But come to think of it, the, the, the story I just read about the, the space shuttle, NASA, that exploded and killed all seven astronauts if they had listened yes we've wasted money but see what we're doing now would end up in a disaster yes guys we're here today because of decisions we have made every organization every individual every family do you think from hindsight if you had taken time to look at if I if I take this decision differently or if I had taken it differently, would I, and all that. But listen, the future is just ahead of us. We're going to make more decisions. We're going to take more decisions. But I think we need to look at it from that perspective of the Abilene paradox. All right, guys. I thought to come on just to share this with you. That decision you want to take as a father, as a mother, as a family, husband, wife, in that union, that decision you want to make in that organization as a CEO, as the departmental head, that decision you want to take as a leader of that organization, have you considered listening to the voices within? It may not be everybody, but at least you give the opportunity and when they air their opinion, you don't shut it down. You don't call it nonsense. It doesn't hold. You don't. You put it down. You analyze it. You, 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 you consider it. Before I go, I'm going to 
end with this story. I always talk about it each time I, 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 I come upon subjects like this. The story of, uh, what's that his name again? I, I keep forgetting his name. There is a Brazilian uh, organization. Why am I forgetting that his name? Oh, why, 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 why? He took over the organization from his father. I know a lot of you must have come upon that story. Uh, why am I forgetting that his name? Give me a minute. Uh, I am going to get it because if I don't get it, uh, it will, it will, the story will not make sense to you. The Brazilian uh, family business. Yes. Is a known name, Ricardo. Yes, that's the name. You know, you, you talk about Ricardo Semler. If you've heard the name, Yes, Ricardo Semla. Ricardo. Mm-hmm. Give me a minute, guys. You know, yep, this is how we do it on the show. Sometimes we just run and uh, get that story. Yes. Ricardo Semla. Now, the story, I mean, the story has it that I read about it, you know, even management classes, of courses will do, they bring it up for us to look at that. His father handed over to him no the company the organization was a family business and they had a lot of uh, families who were gainfully employed through the company and it was a big business but it came a time in the history of the company you know when things were really rough and the first thing his managers or top manage, management, whatever team told him was to lay, let the people go, as in blah, 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 you know, to reduce it. And he said, no, these guys, they've been working here. We've been all together. So he called for a meeting, company-wide meeting from top to bottom. Yes, every single individual, Tom, Dick and Harry, as we say it. And he opened up everything to them to let them know that this is what the company is going through this is what the organization is going through and this is i mean we, we need to make certain decisions if we don't make this decision this is what is going to happen but i don't want to let you people go so he threw or flew the, the kite as we'll call it for a pay cut and that when the things improve the pay court were being reinstated and he, he, he needed to hear from different opinions and simply put his team everybody saw what was about to happen and they jumped in they agreed and you know what he kept his promise when things improved he reinstated now imagine as a CEO you make a decision yes today we hear a lot of you know what we call them stakeholders engagement investors we need to protect investors interest we need to improve and all that but first of all the investor is a human being like every other person now imagine if you put everybody on the table and you ask that question and you begin to hear opinions come in, different opinions. Some might sound outlandish, superfluous, out of this world. Some might sound uh, like a child's plea. But imagine collating all of this. For in the multitude of cancel, there is safety. <laughs> all right, guys, I need to go now. Whatever you do this season, wherever you are this season, remember, there's always an agreement. We need to agree for things to happen. We need to have an understanding. We need to come together. We need to hear ourselves to move forward. I got to go now. You know how we say it on the show. This is where we come to lean on one another's experience to forge a positive path. Till I come your way again. Super excited. Bye for now.
awesome time it has been with you on the World Cafe podcast today. Thank you for being there. You can catch me up on my social media handles, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, all at Amakri Isoboye. Also, you can get copies of my books, A Cocktail of Words, The Color of Words, my HR Notebook, and Hawkers Focus on God on Amazon and Roving Heights online bookstores. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel at the same address at Amakri Isoboye. I love to hear from you and how this podcast has impacted you. You can leave me a message at my email address, amakrigaribaldi at gmail.com. That is A-M-A-C-H-R-E-E-G-A-R-I-B-A-L-D-I. Yes, till I come your way again. Bye for now.